if you do nothing, you will be dead in 60 days. Those were the exact words my doctor told me two weeks ago. Now, as you can expect, that hit pretty hard, but not quite as hard as a couple days later when I realized there is no fucking way this is going to kill me. Hi, I'm Guillaume. Welcome to Living Out Loud. Let me start at the beginning. This story started at the end of 2021 when I decided to sell everything and travel the world without a plan. January 1st, 2022, I grab my backpack, hop on a plane, and spend the next 10 months traveling through Latin America. I eventually meet a girl in Nicaragua, fall in love. Unfortunately for me, that is the start of the downward spiral, storytelling-wise at least. A month and a half after we meet, discover a lump on my testicle, go get it checked out. The doctor says, could be cancer, go home, get everything checked out as quickly as you can. So literally a month and a half after I meet my girlfriend and we begin a relationship, I'm forced to hop on a plane and come back to Canada. Luckily for me, turned out not to be cancer, everything was fine. So at that point, the new plan becomes, I'm going to find an online job that allows me to work from outside of the country that way I can go back to Nicaragua, move in with my girlfriend, get married, and begin the immigration process. That way, a year, a year and a half from now, once everything is accepted, we can come back to Canada and live here together. Of course, that plan went out the window about a month ago. I've been coughing for the last three, four months, and more out of reassurance for my girlfriend than anything else, I decided, let me go get a chest x-ray just to be safe. So on Friday, go in, get the x-ray, enjoy the weekend. On Monday, my family doctor calls me. The first thing she says is, are you sitting down? Immediately, I know, holy fuck, this is going to be bad news. Sure enough, she tells me, we found multiple masses in your lungs. We don't know what it is yet, but there's a high likelihood that it could be cancer. I then spend the next three weeks doing a bunch of tests, waiting for the results of the tests. And about three weeks later, I get the results of the biopsy. They call me into the hospital, sit me down and tell me, you have a very rare form of cancer called alveolar soft part sarcoma. Just to give you an idea of how rare it is, sarcomas make up 1% of all types of cancer. And this type of cancer makes up 0.2 to 1% of all types of sarcoma. So we're basically talking about 1% of 1%. In other words, I won the fucking cancer lottery. Not something I wanted to win, but I guess it was my turn. Yay! Sarcasm. (laughs) Anyway, so when they finally told me, you have a very rare form of cancer, and it's stage four, instead of being devastated, my reaction was, Ah, I finally know what it is. I can start planning. I can come up with a plan. We will find a solution to this. Everything will be fine. Then the next day rolls around. I speak to the oncologist. And that's the moment where he sits me down, stares me straight in the eyes and says, if you do nothing, you will be dead in 60 days. He then goes on to share the story of, there is no cure for this. And there's only one treatment. And unfortunately, there's only a 60% chance of that treatment working. And even if it does work, I have a 10% chance of still being alive in five years. Now, as you can expect, getting that news made it very, very difficult for me to remain positive. During the day, I was still positive. I'm like, no, I'm going to find a solution. I'm going to find an alternative treatment. I'm going to find a cure. I'm going to leave no stone unturned. But at night, when I went to bed, my brain would just click on and all the worst scenarios would start playing through my head. I literally got to the point where I'm like, is it possible for me to get life insurance with my current condition? That way, if I die, I can leave money to my girlfriend. That way, if I die, I can leave money so my family can cover the cost of my funeral and they don't have to pay for that themselves. That is how far I explored this. 
and I was kind of stuck in that funk for a couple days. It wasn't until about three days later when I realized two things, two very, very important things that completely changed my perspective. First thing is, I remembered something. My last name is Sauvé, which means saved. So I'm already saved. In fact, I have been saved since the moment I was born. The second thing that I realized <coughs> Sorry, that's one of the downsides of having hundreds of tumors in your lungs. You just start coughing randomly. So, <coughs> Anyway, as I was trying to say, the other thing that I realized is over the last four to five years, I've been going through this process that I describe, a, that I describe as falling in love with fear. That means doing all the things that scare me, overcoming all my limitations, all my fears, all my insecurities. And some of the challenges I've done during that time are isolating myself in complete darkness to, for five days just to see what would happen. Running an ultra marathon after only a couple months of training and having never run a marathon or an ultra marathon before. And then last year, when I sold everything to travel the world and met my girlfriend, at some point during that journey, I'm like, ooh, I haven't challenged myself in a while. Let's try to walk 100 kilometers in 24 hours. I failed, only got to 58 and a half almost ended up dying in the process, but I don't regret it. And the reason why is because all those challenges that I've done in the last four to five years have been preparing me for this very moment. And I'm not just saying, you know, I've been preparing for this my whole life because that is just fucking bullshit. That is just something that people say. But no, in this case, I have legitimately, literally been preparing for this for the last four to five years. Let me give you an example. If you consider that this cancer is like running a marathon, well then all the challenges I've done is like me running, me practicing for this marathon without really realizing it. And then someone just comes up one day and they're like, hey, you have to run this marathon. And you're like, I don't want to run a marathon. I didn't choose this. I'm not ready. And then you realize, wait, I've been running for years. I'm physically fit. I'm mentally fit. I know I can do this. I am ready. And it's the exact same thing with cancer. Most of my life, whenever I read a self-help book, someone who went through something really intense, who had a really difficult childhood, and instead of letting that crush them, they use that. They use that as motivation to transform themselves, to overcome that challenge and become the most amazing, most epic version of themselves. And every time I read a book like that, two things happened. One, I was really motivated and inspired. Two, little part of me was jealous because I've always wanted to be a motivational speaker. But I've never had that story. I've never had that epic do or die story. And for most of my life, a small part of me has been wishing that I had. And this is why I manifested this. I 100% believe I manifested this cancer. It's exactly what I wanted. It's not what I would have chosen, but it's what I wanted. It's what I craved. And I've been preparing for it for the last four to five years. I'm fucking ready. And that's why in the beginning of this video, I said, there is no fucking way this is going to kill me. This, this is what I meant. So this is me. This is the introduction to my, or rather the reintroduction to my story. This is going to be in video journal form. So as I go through this journey of finding a cure, overcoming, beating stage four cancer, I'm going to share this every single day from this moment until the moment that I find a cure and even beyond that because I'm a storyteller. I'm going to keep doing this. So hopefully this can help motivate you and can help inspire you if you're going through something similar or maybe just entertain you. Whatever it is, stick around and I'll talk to you tomorrow.